When you add content that contains dynamic parameters or prompted filters to an assembled page, typical web focus designer identifies these parameters and alerts you to create prompts for them, providing easy-to-use filtering functionality in your page. You can also apply filter chaining to fields with associated values, so that selections from one filter control affect the values that are available from the controls that are chained to it. When you add a parameterized chart or report to a page, a badge appears on the Filters tab on the sidebar, indicating that you can add filter controls. On the Filters tab, click Add all filters to page to create controls for all parameter filters in your content. Or, right-click one of the listed parameters and click Add to page to add filters one at a time. You don't need to add all filter controls to the page, but be aware that if a filter is required, the content items associated with it will not run if values are not selected. When you add multiple filters from the same content item, if those items are part of the same metadata hierarchy, those items are chained automatically. Chaining is indicated by indentations on the Filters tab. When two filters are chained, the higher-level filter in the chaining group determines the values available in the lower-level filters based on coinciding values. For example, if you add filters for country and state to a page, then when you select a country value from the filter control, the state filter control updates to show only states in the selected country. To manually chain two filter controls, drag one parameter onto another in the list. The parameter is chained as a child of the parameter onto which it was dropped. To disconnect the chaining between two filter controls, Drag the parameter into the blank space between the Add Old Filters to Page button and the top parameter in the list. Once filters are added to the page, they appear in cells on the filter toolbar by default. You can also use a grid container as a receptacle for filter controls that you can place on the page according to your preference. You can also move the filter toolbar above the page title or into a model window overlay by using page level options on the settings tab. You can interact with the filter controls in an assembled page at design time to see how different filter selections affect your content. However, these filter selections are not retained at runtime. To change the default value for a filter in an assembled page, select the filter and on the Settings tab, in the Data Settings section, type a value into the default value text box. You can also change the values that are available from the filter control. As an alternative to the values that are automatically brought in from the associated field, you can manually add values to the control as a static list, or import all values from an external data source as a dynamic list. Once you add controls to the page, select a control and on the Settings tab of the Properties panel, in the Bindings section, click the pencil icon next to the Source box. In the Edit Source dialog box, leave Default selected to automatically pull all relevant values from the data source. Select Static and then click Add Row to add a new value. You can type the literal value that is passed to the filtered content in the Value column and the text that displays in the Filter control to represent that value in the Display column. You can add multiple items, reorder them, and delete them as needed. If you select Dynamic, you get the choice of two options, from Data and from Procedure. If you select the From Data option, 
you can choose a synonym available in your environment and then select the fields from that synonym that should provide the actual and display values for the filter. Optionally, you can enable sorting for your filter either by the actual or display value as well as configure the sorting order. If you select the From Procedure option, you can bind your filter to an existing content item in your repository. Keep in mind that this item must be converted to an XML format in Text Editor. Select your previously created and modified item in the Procedure field, then select fields from this item that should provide the actual and display values for the filter. Notice that the sorting options are disabled here to preserve the sort order defined by the selected procedure. You can modify the appearance and behavior of controls for certain types of fields. Filters for numeric or date fields control two parameters, representing the start and end of a range. If you add them separately to your page, separate controls are initially generated. You can hold the control key to select both controls, then right-click one of them and click Combine to create a single control that allows you to set a range for the filter. You can also right-click a filter control for a dimension field to change it from a drop-down menu to a checkbox control, button set, toggle control, or double list box. Check boxes and double list boxes can be used for multi select filters, and button sets can be used for single select filters. Toggle controls are best used for single select filters with two mutually exclusive options. You can see whether a filter is single select or multi select, whether it is optional or required, and the default value of a filter on a settings tab. You can also apply global names, which you can use to maintain selections and controls for the same field in multiple pages in a portal. You can style filter controls on the Format tab. When you select a filter control, the Format tab allows you to change the position and alignment of the labels and what portion of the cell the control occupies. If you select a filter cell, you can change the alignment of the filter control in the cell. If you select the entire filter toolbar, you can change the number of cells in each row, allowing you to change the size of each control, and you can also change the theme colors. Finally, you can choose when filter selections are applied. By default, selections are applied immediately. To allow users to make multiple filter selections before applying them manually, select the Control tab on the sidebar and drag the Submit button into a cell in the Filter Toolbar or Grid Control. Requiring users to manually submit their filter selections is useful to avoid refreshing the page numerous times when it contains multiple filter controls. A reset button is added alongside the submit button, allowing you to reset all filters to their default values. You can delete this button if you don't want it to be available. As you can see, it is easy to add filters from your content items to a page that you assemble from them. These pages also include many filter customization options allowing you to configure the filter behavior that you want to provide. To learn more, search for TIPCO Web Focus at docs.tipco.com.